Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. I wanted to create a follow-up video to video number eight. Reason being is there are a couple of points that I wanted to correct. Uh, I think some of the explanations of what I did in the previous video weren't quite spot on. So I wanted to clarify a couple of different points. And I also wanted to correct a couple of minor mistakes. So first to reiterate uh, the point with the parent-child relations with the weapon. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to open up our player weapons. So I'm going to open up the base weapon and we're going to open up the assault rifle. Now to clarify on the point of the child-parent relationship, anything that the parent has, the child will automatically have. So to make this point, what I'm going to do is in our assault rifle blueprint, I'm going to copy all of the actions that we took following fire weapon. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them over to our base weapon blueprint. And I'm going to plug them into our fire weapon event. I'm going to compile this and save it. And then in our assault rifle, I'm going to actually delete all of this and compile and save. The reason being is. The event fire exists in the base weapon. Since the assault rifle is a child weapon, it automatically inherits this fire weapon event. So the assault rifle being a child of the base weapon, if we add in that event fire weapon, what this is doing at this point is it is overriding the event that occurs within the base weapon. So to demonstrate, uh, we're going to get rid of this event fire weapon here. I'm going to compile and save. So right now, the fire weapon exists within the base weapon blueprint. So if we go ahead and hit play, and we fire the weapon, you'll notice that it actually performs the actions that are in the base weapon blueprint. Now, if I go into the assault rifle blueprint, and I call that event. This will effectively override the event in the base weapon blueprint. So if I hit play now and I press the fire button, nothing happens. And then as I pointed out, there's the add call to parent function here. And this will execute whatever is in the chain of the base weapon. So if we add that in, save and hit play, our weapon will fire again. But for now, I'm going to actually get rid of this. We're going to compile and save that. So that is one major note to make about parent-child relations. The next thing I wanted to talk about was our calculate shoot info function. Now, on this function, I set the output as the shoot to location which is actually really incorrect. Uh, I'm going to change the name to this uh, to reflect more accurately what it does. And it's going to be the projectile spawn info. In the calculate shoot info here, what we're really doing and what I didn't make a very good point of clarifying in the last video was we're giving the projectile a location to spawn and a direction to travel in once it's spawned. So we're not actually passing information to the projectile on where it's going per se, other than rotation. So it's not getting fed any information about the target. All it is is start here, go in this direction. So the projectile spawn info is a more accurate representation of what we're doing with this calculate shoot info function. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And one other thing I would like to make a correction on is in our projectile. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open up projectiles and I'm going to open up our base projectile blueprint here. Is I never connected a uh, play sound at location, location. I did put a note in the previous video at the bottom. Apparently some people missed it. So I'll just make a point to point it out here. 
that uh, I'm connecting the impact point from our break hit result here up to the location for our play sound at location. And that'll go ahead and trigger the sound to play where the projectile hits. So I'm gonna compile and save everything and back out. And one last thing of note, the projectile class in our base weapon blueprint here, I had originally set it to be an actor and I'm gonna actually change that. So in the variable type, I'm going to search for base projectile. And we have our base projectile blueprint. And we're going to select that class. And we're going to go ahead and change the variable type. Now what this is going to do is if we compile and save and we take a look in our possible default value settings here, it's only going to show children that are related to the base projectile blueprint. So we'll have the parent class itself, the base projectile, and then we'll also only have the option for our assault rifle projectile, which will make it easier in future iterations when we make more projectiles for weapons. We won't have to sort through a gigantic list of different classes. And it will also prevent us from making any errors from selecting a class that isn't compatible or that we don't want being spawned. And then I am going to go ahead and make the assault rifle a fully automatic weapon. Right now, we just have the base weapon on a fire weapon event. It's just triggering this series of playing an animation, calculating the shoot info, and then spawning the projectile. So we are going to actually use an override in our assault rifle blueprint. So in our assault rifle blueprint here, I'm going to go ahead and right click. And we are going to search for fire weapon. And we're going to use the event. And this is going to override the base weapon blueprint and dictate what our assault rifle does and we want it to do something different than just single firing. So in order to accomplish this I'm going to go ahead and we're going to create a new variable in our assault rifle blueprint. It's going to be a boolean and I'm going to call this is firing. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set this variable when we receive the event fire weapon. And we'll go ahead and plug it in and we want the value to be set to true. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new custom event. So in the graph here I'm going to right click and we're going to type in a custom event and I'm going to call this automatic fire. Now what we're going to do here is from our event fire weapon we're going to go ahead and call that automatic fire event so we'll search for automatic fire and we'll go ahead and call that function so it's going to perform whatever is in this automatic fire section here and we want to do in this automatic fire section is we're going to add in a branch first and we want to check if we're firing so we're going to get is firing and we're going to plug this into our branch and then next we're going to go ahead and perform all the actions that are in our parent function which is playing the animation calculating the projectile information and then spawning our actor so from this point I'm going to grab our event fire weapon and we are going to add a call to the parent function. I'm going to drag this down here and I'm going to connect this into the true of our branch. So what we're essentially doing here is we're getting our event fire weapon, we're setting a new variable to his firing, we're calling on our new custom event automatic fire and the automatic fire is checking to see if is firing is set and then we're calling our parent function which in the base weapon is going to 
play an animation, it's going to calculate our shoot information, and then it's going to spawn our projectile. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to bring in the override for our stop firing event. So we'll get event stop fire weapon. And for this, we're going to want to set the is firing variable to false. Now, in order to get this weapon to actually fire automatically, I am going to use a timer. And we'll explain how that works as we go through it. So from the event of auto, or the end of automatic fire here, this is only firing the weapon once. We want to drag off the end of that. And we're going to search for set timer by event. So we'll select set timer by event. Now with all of these events that show up on our event graph, there's this little red box for an output delegate. And then we have an event for our set timer by event. We're going to go ahead and we're going to connect that up to our automatic fire event. And I'll throw in a couple of reroute nodes to neaten it up. And then we have to enter a time. So our weapons are going to have a specific firing rate. I'm going to go ahead and add a new variable into our assault rifle here. I'm going to call this firing rate. And I'm going to make it a float. Now this is going to determine how often this timer is triggered. So we're going to drag out our firing rate, we're going to get it, and we're going to plug it into our time. And then we want to check the looping box here. So it is true, we want this timer to loop over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to compile and save. And then the firing rate here is going to be the amount of time that this event re-triggers. Now the animation for the assault rifle I know is uh, 0.223 seconds. And we can double check that by going into our player weapons or the uh, sci fi weapon light. We'll go into the weapon section, we'll go into the animations, and we'll find our fire rifle W animation. And we see that, uh, oh, correction, the animation is 0.233 seconds. So in our assault rifle blueprint here, I'm going to change the firing rate to 0.233. So this timer will last how long the animation for firing the weapon lasts. Now you can play with this firing rate. Making the firing rate obviously smaller is going to speed up the firing cycle of the weapon. Making it larger is going to slow down the firing cycle of the weapon. And then what we want to do is off this return value, we want to go ahead and we want to promote this to a variable. And we're just going to call this timer. So now we have a reference to this timer so that we can cause it to stop later on. And we're going to do this when we get the event stop fire weapon. So from here, I'm going to drag out our timer reference and we're going to get it. And then we want to drag off of the timer and we want to clear timer by handle. And what this will do is it will essentially reset our timer and stop the weapon from firing. So we're going to go ahead and compile and save this and we'll go ahead and test it out. So right now I'm holding down the firing button, the weapon is firing automatically. And if I let go of the fire button, the weapon stops firing. Now we're probably also going to want to turn off these line traces, uh, the debug that we have going on, because we know that the projectile is in fact traveling to our line trace hit points. So real fast in base weapon, under Calculate Shoot Information, our line trace by channel here, I'm just going to go ahead under Draw Debug Type. I'm going to set it to None. We'll compile and save. 
If we hit play, it's not drawing our weapon lines anymore. So that is going to complete our update. Uh, just so several things that I thought I should get out of the way. I know the last video was running long and it went really close to an hour. And I was getting tired and I started kind of not making sense throughout the video. So I just wanted to clarify a few points in there and finish up with our assault rifle and make it an actual fully automatic weapon that we can move forward with. And if you have any further questions or comments, uh, please go ahead and leave those down below. I also wanted to mention I started a Facebook page. So if you want to track notifications for new videos via Facebook, you can go ahead and like that. And I will leave the link down below. So thank you guys so much for watching.